Welcome to the Carr and Seguin Show, hosted by Devin Carr and Paul Seguin, where two Michiganders dive into real estate, outdoors, community building, and everything in between. What up? What's going on, man? What even episode are we? 48, 49, something like that? 49. I think so. I don't know. Sounds good. Yeah, it works for us. (laughs) (laughs) No, but we have a a, a very honored uh, guest today uh, in the studio with us. Someone that's brought warm water fly fishing in Michigan. I mean, revealed it, I should say. Yeah. Really. Mike Schultz with Schultz Outfitters. I'm sure everybody in Michigan has seen one of his stickers driving on the highway somewhere <laughs> in Michigan. Heck yeah. I mean, it's just everywhere and everything that you've guys done. I mean, your shop in Ypsilanti I and mean, what you guys brought to the town and all the local businesses. I'm sure everyone's honored and happy that you're a part of it. Heck yeah, man. It's been fun. Yeah. So just to give people a general idea, I mean, when did... Schultz Outfitters become, and what kind of brought you to the Ypsilanti area? Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, it started technically back in 03, but, you know, most people would, you know, think that it really started with the shop, which, you know, that's when it really took off. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, 2012 uh, will be a 10 years here in March, so Heck pretty, yeah. pretty okay. cool. Yeah. Decade. Decade. Yep. Flew by. Double digits. Yeah. No, <laughs> You really know 10 years have went by when you look at the pictures right. when you were 10 years younger. <laughs> so, yeah, a little few less wrinkles, a little, little tighter skin, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, it's uh, yeah. you know, um, it's growing old. But, uh, yeah, man, it's uh, how do we end up in Ipsy? We ended up in Ipsy through hockey. There you yeah. Go. Uh, yeah. So uh, a former teammate of mine, his, his father owned the building or owns the building um, that we're still in. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I played, played with hockey with him and okay. his dad was a sharp businessman and, uh, owns a, owns a, a business that's been around for probably 30 years now. It's called Esquire Interiors. They're out on Jackson road in Ann Arbor. And, uh, yeah, he owns the building and he's like, dude, you gotta come to Ipsy. Right. Like, Why is that? And he's like, well, one, I know you ain't got no money. <laughs> Uh, and two, I think it'll work really good. Yeah. So yeah, it gave me a sweetheart deal to get me rolling. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, here we are 10 years later and boy, have things changed. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you what could. a prime location though, too. I know. I was just about to say that the river right there. I mean, mm-hmm. let's, let's be honest. I don't think there's any other shop that puts on as many seminars or stuff that you guys do or offer those options. They have the river right there, I mean, in your backyard. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to make it so much easier Yeah, versus def- on grass. Yeah, <laughs> definitely uh, have, uh, you know, you look out the window, you're in the shop, and you're, you're shopping. If you're a consumer, you're looking at stuff, and, you know, you, you're thinking, man, should I buy it? Shouldn't I buy it? And then you just lift your head up, and you look at the river. And right, like, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> yeah, I got to buy it, yeah, of course, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it used to be a joke that the river's our number one salesperson, but, uh, you know, it is nice to have. Right. Um, uh, directly across from the store, there's a, a big park, you know. It's mm-hmm. probably 30, 40 acres right there. So you can literally walk out of the shop, walk down a set of staircase that's technically on our property, go across a, a wooden bridge, they call it the Tridge, and then you're in Riverside Park. Um, casting rods, like you said. Right. You know, like yeah. fly fishing is like, you know, if, if for those of you that don't do it, it's it's like golf or it's like hockey or it's like baseball. Like not everyone uses the same bat. Not everyone uses the same hockey stick. Not everyone uses the same golf club shaft, you know. Right. Uh, makeup of it. Yeah, yeah, right. makeup mm-hmm. of it, right? right. So to, to, to just buy a rod or just grab one and be like, this has got to be the best because this is what they're advertising and it's on the back of the, you know. It's the most expensive. Yeah, it's the most yeah. expensive. Yeah. It's kind of silly. brand name. Right. Right. It's kind of silly. So, um, you know, I've definitely worked in shops that took different approaches as I, as I grew up in the industry. But now, you know, I've kind of found things that work. And uh, one of the things that you have to do is you have to go out and actually use the equipment right. and right. see what's up. So, yeah. yeah, being able to step over to the park, uh, great. Be able to step into the park and then step into the river. <laughs> Even <laughs> better. Right. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. It's nice. It's nice. Heck yeah. <laughs> but then also, I mean, as you guys progressed, I mean, we went from you owned a couple, couple sections of the building, and now you guys over the last, was it March? 
last year that you guys opened up the yeah so we've had so the, the building is broken up into little 900 square foot units um started with two of them you know and that was the warehouse the office the kitchen right bathroom <laughs> <laughs> sales floor you know and then eventually we end up taking over a third unit um and then two or three years later we got the fourth which had like a has a garage on the back of it so we have our offices back there yep. shipping receivings all back there so yeah we're uh kind of running out of space again. <laughs> right. That's a good problem to have. But, you know, it's it's we got everything we need right now uh, product-wise, and, you know, the, the footprint suits what we're doing right now. Right. Perfectly. Well, I mean, you guys just released your conventional side, too, so it's not just mm-hmm. fly fishing for all Correct. those listening. I mean, you guys yep. service it all. You guys use it all. Yep. So it's not like you just threw in some lures and a couple – Right. Bait cast. I mean, you guys actually yeah. use it. You're knowledgeable about the product. For sure. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I had always had that in the in the plans, you mm-hmm. know, like, all right, I, mean, I see where we're at. Well, there's obviously, uh, before I say what I'm going to say, fly fishing is a very, very small piece of the fishing pie. Right. Right. So, you know, um, you know, some of these big companies that offer both fly rods and conventional tackle rods, you Stats are staggering. Less than 1% of the makeup of, you know, their business is fly. So, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy, Jeez. right? Yeah. So fly fishing small. small. Um, always wanted to do it. Um, you know, I had the knowledge, but I didn't have the current knowledge, you know? So right. I, I, just like everything, people come into your lives for a reason. And I, I, I met a guy by the name of Jack Hippie, who uh, is the, eventually became our conventional tackle manager. Um, student athlete. Uh, fished for um, uh, Adrian College. Okay. Which, for those of you that don't know, bat, you know, know a little bit about bass fishing and collegiate bass fishing is really taken off. Yeah. And out of all the schools, <laughs> Adrian, believe it or not, in Michigan is one of the most competitive and always in the top 10. No way. Last year wow. they won the whole dang thing. Really? Oh, really? That's yeah. awesome. They compete against like Auburn and all the southern states. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, no colleges joke. Won. Right. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> so they actually offer scholarships. Um, and I met Jack at a show at the ultimate fishing show in okay. Detroit and like five years ago when he was freshman. I'm like, dude, this kid's like 19 right. and he's like, <laughs> can talk and he's approachable and he's respectful. I'm like, dude, what do you want to do when you get done with, you know, college? Yeah. Like, I want to work in the industry. I'm like, well, what do you want to do? He's like, I want to be a rep. I'm like, I want to be a rep, dude. Not, not to start, you know, <laughs> right, like, yeah. you got to ease into it and that's a good goal. But yeah. Right. Not yet. But anyway, so I kind of had him and, and he graduated and COVID hit and we had to put the, 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 the whole plan on pause, but mm-hmm. long story short, we're up, we're running. Nice. Uh, Conventional tackle, huge uh, part of our business now. Uh, what we've done there is we've really focused on hard to get, right? Mm-hmm. So um, JDM is a uh, tackle uh, that comes from Japan, and people eat it up in the States. Okay. Uh, huh. So we do a lot of JDM stuff. And then, of course, we have your household names like, you know, Rapala and Berkeley and all that stuff. Yeah. But our number one company last year, Mega Bass. It's a company out of Japan. They make rods. They make uh, lures. And people just really? freak, you know, it's like, I've never seen anything like it. it it's almost like adult action figures, <laughs> right? Like you come in, you look at the wall of like jerk baits and you're like, right. I don't have that one. And it's like the most crazy colors you've ever seen. But people I was going like, to say like, what separates them apart from all the other just, just quality? You yeah. Just look at it. You're like, man, this is totally just different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're looking like, you know, let's just say a, a Rapala costs 10 bucks. These, right. These cost 20, mm-hmm. you know? But people appreciate that, right? right? The paint jobs, the attention to detail, the hooks, the upgraded. It's not just mass produced, ship out and yeah. let's roll kind of thing. It's yeah. the details and yep. stuff about it, right? So like Devin mentioned, we have the product, we have the know-how, and then we have a killer sales staff that are good people that can right. talk and you actually get customer service, right? <laughs> what a concept. It's crazy. Right? It's crazy. crazy. Customer service actually works, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wild. No, I will say, I mean, I've been in your shop many times, and I mean, everyone there that works there, I mean, is always friendly and knowledgeable. I mean, it's not like you're sitting there just staring at a wall of right. Where what what do I pick? What do I mm-hmm. need? Kind of thing. I mean, someone's always there to help. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. Versus other places, you can go and <laughs> that they just sit there at the desk or something. Yeah. Hi. Playing on their phone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
no doubt. So people appreciate that yeah. uh, moral of the story. And uh, yeah, we do it pretty well. And I think, you know, like when it comes to like the guiding, it's like it's 98% rebook, you know? I mean, right. Once you, once you meet the guys and, you know, yeah, there are customers that gravitate towards Corey or Jesse mm -hmm. or Senyo or whoever. Everyone's got different personalities, but we all take the same approach, you know, treat right. everybody like you want to be treated and, you know, right. good things happen. Right. 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 Absolutely. Well, that's great. I mean, 98% rebook. I mean, that's, yeah. And really, I mean, you know, you're doing something right. Yeah. Right. That's what I'd I say. mean, but we talk about this all the time. I mean, we, it's just taking care of people. Right. Right. And it's, I don't know. I think in any walk of business, when it's all about the, the end result and you're not focused on the process of, of, guiding of walking someone through buying a house, whatever it is. Yeah. Right. If you don't take care of the process first and all your focus on the end result, which is a paycheck, it, your business is going to just scream that Suffer. to anybody. Yeah. yeah. When you okay. have a 98% rebook, it's, it's that, the process, the fun, the, the part of the guide is, right. is what everyone's coming back for. Right. It, it, right. The money ain't nothing. Let's, let's go. It's a good time. Yep. No doubt. Yeah. So in terms of, I mean, fly tying world, I mean, I don't think anyone puts on as many classes as you guys do from beginners to, I mean, experts to not, I mean, to intermediates, whatever. I mean, you guys do it in person. You guys do it virtual for those that maybe can't make it or can't live far make away. it yeah, or yeah, live right. far away. I mean, yeah. I used to work somewhere where, I mean, we were up north, so having people come to a fly tying event was more difficult mm -hmm. than, say, a more metropolitan area. But even with that, I mean, we never even thought about doing virtual. I mean, you guys kind of yeah. took off with it. Yeah, so that... COVID has definitely increased that. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah, that's what I was going to touch on. Um, yeah, I mean, we have done in-person... like. Rewind a little bit. Like, flies. I mean, yeah, you got to build a community around your business. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially if you're doing what we're doing. Right. Um, so, yeah, uh, bringing people together, um, fly tying, that kind of stuff. It's like fly fishing is one of those things where, sure, you can go on YouTube and you can, you know, type in something and find a million videos. And, you know, it could be someone that actually knows what they're talking about or it could be just right. somebody <laughs> trying to be an influencer. Or whatever you call it. Right, right. But, you know, actually sitting down with somebody from the shop or someone that we – you know, for lack of a better term, endorse to right. come into our shop and or present for us and do stuff. That's huge. Um, you can get the stuff anywhere, not all of it, but majority of it. But like if you have a shop that can or people at a shop that can teach you actually how to use it properly. I mean, that's invaluable. Right. 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 So, yeah, bar flies was like that's 13 years old now. Right. So bar flies with the idea behind that was get people together at a local pub. You know, how are you going to get people to come and tie flies? You can throw some alcohol. Right. <laughs> yeah. Party in there, yeah, right? Right. Absolutely. So yeah. So years ago started that at Dexter pub, downtown Dexter. I live in Dexter, still live there today. At the time I was, I was new to the community. So I, I set it up. We didn't have a shop and uh, you know, I think we might've had 20 people show up the first night and then it was 30 people. And then it's like, Oh man, we need to take the hole upstairs. And right. then, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. The shop opened and we, we took it from Dexter, moved it to Ipsy, um, spent many good years uh, working with the people at Sidetracks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, right at the right at the end of the street there. Corner. We're on the same. Yeah, we're right. on, we're on the yep. opposite corner of Sidetracks. We're at located in Ipsy, um, in Depot Town. But anyways, everything was great, and then of course COVID hit. So right. um, that pivoted uh, instant. You didn't have time, right? We just found out. Right, like, yeah. Oh, it's like the fly fishing show is canceled, and uh, you guys are gonna be locked in your house for whatever. Right. Yeah. So like, <laughs> what are we gonna do? We, we can't afford just to be sitting here with our hands waiting for right, yeah. know, someone to make a decision for us. So uh, we pivoted to you know got Zoom right yep. roll. So we started doing it online, and then obviously like anything, monkey see, monkey do, and now the whole industry does it. You right. know? Yeah. Not saying we're the first person ever to do a zoom fly tying, but like right. we were the first one probably to put together like a solid 12 to 14 person lineup mm -hmm. doing it every Wednesday. Right. Um, so we still do it to the, to this day. Uh, haven't been comfortable enough to move it back to the bar. Um, just cause of craziness. And I don't want right. to put that on a bar owner or a restaurant owner at this time, just add more to their plate. Right. Um, right. so we put it on hiatus again this year, but we're doing it every Wednesday night. So mm -hmm. you can literally like, there's people out there that bagged us. Do the in person. We got to get you back. You know, we want to come back. It's like, right. all right, screw it, we'll do it. Um, <laughs> so uh, we got an in person going every Wednesday night. 
and we bill it as a grads class. So this isn't going to be something where you want to show up the first time you've ever tied flies, yep. which was a really cool part of bar flies. We would have a beginner class every week and there'd be 15 to 20 people in there just hacking first away. First timers, right? First timers, right? Yeah. So we don't have that going on on a regular basis every Wednesday, but we do have beginner classes going. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a class in person every Wednesday, and then there's also a Zoom class every Wednesday. Okay. So um, it's not what it used to be, not going to lie, because being there and having the people there. And right. You was just a big, grow off that, right? Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. a big part of it. So, I mean, I think this is temporary what we're doing, but it's a temporary fix for now. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I think it would be said. I mean, the Zoom and everything helps, but... You need that connection because, I mean, if yeah, we all people, do. people probably don't ask as many questions or what have you when they're on Zoom right. and versus in person. Mm-hmm. But what about any of the distractions? Yeah. I mean, dude, I'm oh, on Zoom, yeah. my phone, right. kids, family, depending on where they're doing that, right. right? When you're at the bar with other dudes that or women, whatever, yeah. mm-hmm. that are trying to learn how right. to do the same thing you're doing in person, it's completely different. Yeah. Right. You totally know, different. and it's, yeah, and it, the, I mean, obviously the growth, it's a lot harder to grow a community when you're all on a computer screen. Correct. Instead yeah. of being in person, right? I think that's, I mean, it's never going away. Human interaction needs right. to, to, to just grow in that way. Yep. Agree. And but I, mean, I want to, I want to go a little deeper here. I want to hear the beginning story of where this all began. Where it all began. All began. The I want, I want my to, crazy fishing career. <laughs> that everything i want the juiciness so yeah. that that was what when i was looking at our little talk points i'm like wait there's no yeah. raw i want to know mike schultz yeah. where, where did this start so i've always been you know always been interested in fishing i was fortunate enough to have you know a father who introduced me to hunting and fishing at a young age yeah. and as Devin knows uh played hockey my whole life so things were crazy spent a lot of time in the car a lot of time with with my parents um traveling all over the place and you know, fishing and hunting was the, you know, wasn't the majority of the time we spent because we were consumed with sports. <laughs> but uh, when we did, you know, it was something that really interested me. And, you know, I, um, my brother was fished with me and my friends, you know, the few that I had that, you know, enjoyed fishing. We'd always make a point to go do it in the summer and spring, whatever. Uh, so I was going to school. Um, totally, you know, that the guy in class that, you know, was in college and I had my magazine of fly fishing underneath my textbook, <laughs> you know, just Love getting, it. getting right. through so I could yeah. keep playing hockey and, yeah. and doing, doing what I needed to do. And, um, at the time, I, I, I met Allie. Yeah. Uh, my wife uh, now. And Did you play college hockey? I, I played at uh, Eastern. Did yeah, you? Not, nothing crazy. Um, what the frick? Yeah, I only yeah. played at Eastern. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so we had the, the most fun. Only I, D1, right? Hockey? Or no, it, was no, it D2? No, no, no. no it was dude, a club team? It's club, dude. Okay. The most, fun I, the most fun I had there was playing roller hockey. Oh, it's right? fun. Dude, we we had the, 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 the ice hockey team had a period where they got suspended. And <laughs> and a bunch of the roller hockey or ice hockey kids what came to play roller hockey, roller hockey. dude. It was hell on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> it was like none of us could stop. Right, <laughs> we'd just go crashing into the boards. Yeah, we, figured, we we had the wrong wheels, you know all that stuff. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyways, talk about partying and having a hell of a good time in college. Um, yeah, the Eastern Michigan Dirty Birds. Um, dirty Birds. <laughs> shout out to the Dirty Birds. Yeah, <laughs> the, few, the few that are out there listening. Um, <laughs> But anyways, awesome. um, so I, I, I met Allie and I, I was into fishing and uh, I just, I pretty much bagged, um, I, rewind a little bit. When I was in high school, I would go to the local fly shop, which was called Buter's Outdoors. Yep. It was in Northville. Um, and I would literally hang out there until they made me do something <laughs> and kept asking for a job, asking for a job, asking for a job and just kept getting kind of. Poo-poo. Right, yeah. <laughs> don't don't need anybody right now. You know this this place is barely hanging out. <laughs> we, uh, you know, can we barely can't pay even, for the lights. Yeah, 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 can't afford to pay the guys that are working here already. We don't need you. Um, <laughs> but I uh, I just, just kept being persistent. And mm-hmm. Finally, I was able to you know get a seven dollar an hour job or whatever it Heck was at yeah. the time. And um, you know, John kind of gave me my first opportunity. Uh huh. Um, if we, we could spend a whole you know hour talking about just that that experience in my life but long story short uh J- john made a uh, some bad decisions when it came to his business partners and uh was pretty much run out of his own store jeez and i had the opportunity to take it over um 
And you can imagine being a young kid in that situation with the guy that's like your mentor right. uh, is getting axed and you're getting asked to replace somebody that's <laughs> names on the building. Right. Yeah. Um, so I remember vividly, you know, taking that, what I, the situation that I was in to my parents and being like, yo, this is what's up, you know? Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. I feel like I need to talk to John because like this guy was going to get blindsided. You know? right. right. So I ended up making the decision to go talk with him. I let him know what was going on. And this was going to happen pretty quickly that you're going to get axed from your own store. dude. And he, I never forget it. You know, he's a big, tall, right, lanky yeah, dude, yeah. way bigger than me. And he looks down to me. He's like, this is your opportunity, kid. <laughs> he's like, don't take wooden nickels. That's all I have to say. <laughs> but, uh, I think you'd be uh, making a mistake if you just walked away from this. And I was like, no joke. You know, you got, I mean, that's just, you got that feeling in your gut. Like, really? Like, okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, so like, <laughs> So yeah, he kind of pushed me off the edge, and uh, <laughs> he's actually coming to town in June. We're doing a, I'm doing a film with Costa. Oh really? They're gonna tell oh, the yeah. story that I'm kind of telling you guys. Okay. About. I'm bringing John down. To oh fish nice. With me. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. So I'm still friends with John to this day. He, he you know, such he, a nice man. Yeah, I super mean, good dude. Yeah. He went came to my wedding and my Ali and I's wedding down yeah. in the Bahamas, and um, just a good human. Good, me, you know, just a good dude, still right? Fun guy. But anyways, so I took that store over. Worked there for. Three years, um, kind of was, uh, I mean, it, nothing really changed. I was working for someone that really didn't understand the industry, really didn't understand the business of the industry or the consumer. <laughs> and uh, so I stuck it out for like three years and uh, kind of got headhunted out of there by another shop. Uh, moved out there, worked in Ann Arbor for three more years, I think. Um, a whole nother wild, <laughs> yeah. wild ride as Devin knows a little oh, bit about man. it. Um, that's God rest your soul, John Davis. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, wild ride out there and finally had to come to the decision that I was going to leave there and become a full-time guide. Um, so guided for a couple years, uh, Allie and I, uh, got pregnant and, uh, it was like, okay, now I'm going to be an adult. I got to figure something <laughs> out. So always wanted to open a store, came out of that kind of that 07, 08 recession, 09, things started getting better, uh, guided through that. And then, uh, took the plunge, uh, probably made the decision around late 2010, got my ducks in, in a row and opened the store in March of 2012. Um, so since then I've, uh, you know, the business has, has grown substantially, um, Many more people working there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, there's uh, half a dozen sales staff people. There's uh, Greg Sanyo's general manager. Corey runs the fly side of things. Jack, like I was talking about, runs the conventional. And then we've got a staff of guides and instructors. So I have uh, myself plus four other river guides. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Colton, who guides on Lake St. Clair. So he does big water stuff. Nice. Out there, and then we have two instructors. So if you need to learn how to fly cast, or you're proficient at trout fishing, but you now you're going to go take the plunge and you're going to go bone fishing down in you know the Bahamas, or you're going right. tarpon fishing in the Keys. <laughs> right. You, there's some different tools you got to work on, and we have guys uh, John uh, Cleveland and Jay Wisnowski that do all of our uh, casting instruction. Okay. So um, for those of you out there that don't know much about fly fishing, fly fishing is like uh, being able to skate to play hockey. You need to know how to cast to fly fish. And, uh, um, you know, our instructors are uh, Federation of Fly Fishers certified mm -hmm. and uh, really good people and patient and good instructors, good anglers. And they can uh, really... Uh, Give you a year's worth of you hacking away, right. <laughs> like two three hours. Yeah. So we do a lot of lessons, yeah. a lot of lessons. Yeah. Well, like you said, I mean, for I mean, especially for Michiganders who go to Florida maybe once a on vacation for a week, and they want to go try Everglades or the Keys, and mm -hmm. they want to go fish the flats. I mean, it's not like you're just roll casting 10 feet. <laughs> right. I mean, there's a lot more to it. And I mean, obviously I'm sure you guys see people that are maybe have tried it, just going there and then realizing, well, this isn't, it's a lot different. Maybe right. I need to take a lesson or two. Right. Before. No, that's huge. And like, that's one thing that's about our fisheries around here. So we, we guide, um, the Huron river, the Shiawassee, the Kalamazoo, the Flint, grand the raisins so all the smallmouth warm water rivers around here we we guide um if you are learning how to fly fish and your first experience fly fishing is to go trout fishing you're probably going to be setting yourself up for failure right 
but having fisheries around here that have smallmouth bass, they have good numbers of smallmouth bass. I'm not going to say if you're brand new, you're going to go out and catch a trophy size smallmouth oh, yeah, bass, right. but you're going to go catch fish. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's, what's cool. You're going to have success. Um, you could go up to famous rivers like the Osable or the Manistee or the Pier Marquette. And as you know, you used to guide up there. It's like, let's go learn how to fly fish and then let's go try to get a drag free drift with a 12 foot leader and you right. know, light tip it and a tiny dry fly. Ain't going to happen. Right. right. But you can go out in a small mouth river and break it down to its simplest form and get somebody who just started instantly hooked up into fish, learning how to set the hook, learning how to strip the line just the basic mechanics, mm-hmm. right? You're, you you don't go to Pebble Beach the first time you right. go golfing. <laughs> you go to the driving range, right. right? Right. So what I what can say to you is, you know, having that product, and I say a product because it is, of amazing fisheries around here, really good guides and instructors that are dialed in, and you're close to home for a lot of these people, right? Right. right. So like, you don't have to go, hey babe, or hey husband i gotta leave for three days to go up north and i'm gonna stay the night for two nights and you fish know it's gonna be a th- yeah fish yeah. you know it's gonna, not gonna be it could literally be an eight hour four hour you know part of your day right to come meet up with us somewhere and go fishing mm-hmm. so it works for a lot of people so the the guiding portion of the business has been steadily g- growing with the you know retail side you right know? i mean they, they're, they're in lockstep so um yeah, it's uh, it's fun, man. It's it's really good fishing, and, and not only do we have good fishing around here, but we literally have world class river smallmouth fishing. Oh, all right, right here, and people right. like look at like see pictures on Instagram and whatnot. And they're like, "Where's that from?" It's like, dude, it's from the here. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's in there. Yeah, there's yeah. not many of them, but they're there. They're, they're there. Where they're at. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's really it's really it's beginner friendly, intermediate mm-hmm. friendly. You know, um, we take people out that are going to do it once, and we got guys that. You know, I'm a once a year, I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Um, it's an annual thing. We also have people that book us a dozen times a year or more. That's dope. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's it's cool. And then not only it's not the same experience every time because the river is an ever changing environment. Right. Living in Michigan is an ever changing environment. So you literally have programs within the programs. So the first time you go fishing in the spring, you might be fishing deep. Um, as the water warms, you might be fishing mid level, and by you know definitely by the beginning of May, you're going to be fishing top water. Mm-hmm. So you have all these different programs, and you know everybody's got you know, all the different guides have things they like to do, right. rivers they like to go to, sections they like to go to. So you can hop around with different guides, or you might find one that you like, and he's Just your dude forever. Stick with right, him. Yeah. right, right. Feel comfortable with them, mm-hmm. and you can share all of your secrets with them. You got it. There you go. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah the, the the drift boat is like a barber shop. Right. Yeah. Never yeah. leaves. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, ten year anniversary. Mm-hmm. I mean, every year you guys do something great. You always have guests. What do you got? Kind of. Can you really? Yeah. Reveal some of your plans for this yeah, year? Yeah, I mean, we're kind of still in that weird holding pattern, so we're not really bringing anybody in like we have in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, we found through COVID that uh, our, our customers respond really well to our staff. Yep. Um, so, you know, everybody's got their own unique personality, their own unique thing that they may specialize in or be interested at the time, so uh, interested in at the time. So, right. um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're pretty much rolling with our crew. I would say one wild thing I said a meeting about before I came here that's gonna happen I mean it sounds absolute crazy um, but a shop like ours that has you know double digit growth every year we do we have like zero online sales like literally <gasps> we have a Facebook and an Instagram store that's mm-hmm. it so this year the big target on the wall okay. is to get um, you know a online store rolling that's dope so I mean that's gonna be require more employees right Um, yeah but uh you know that's a big step for us because i've i've resisted it for a long time because i think one of the things that we do really well is customer service and actually talking to the customer and there is definitely a consumer out there that really values that right oh yeah and and i think we've we've got a lot of them (laughs) (laughs) you know you, you look at our you know where people are coming from that purchase from us i mean it's all over the country it's all over the world um People are pretty loyal. There's a lot of oh, loyal, yeah. loyal customers out right. there that will only buy stuff from us, even in this crazy, you know, supply chain issues. Even if we don't have it, you know, if we tell them, hey, man, we'll have this thing March 15th, I'm cool. I'll, I'll stick with you. Mm-hmm. You know, I can find it online, but, 
you guys bring so much more value right. than just clicking. Right. So that's the biggest thing of this year for well, us. That's is, big, yeah. Yeah, we're going to rock that out. Greg Senio's taking running point on that. Um, but besides that, man, just fishing hard. Uh, the you know our, our smallmouth guiding season gets cranking middle of March. Um, other things that we've kind of tuned back a little bit, but we've also expanded at the same time. We don't do a lot of international travel right now, right? Okay. It's just a yep. pain in the butt. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, we had, we had one group of people that we didn't book it, but they just made it to like Brazil. Mm-hmm. And then they, the, someone on their group failed their COVID test in Brazil. So they weren't allowed to go to the lodge. Like, <laughs> can you oh, imagine? No, I mean, we're not talking. No, this I couldn't cheap. imagine. This is yeah, like right. probably 10 grand a dude. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not so I don't want to deal with that. So we've expanded our, our uh, stuff within the continental United States. Okay. So right. this year I'll be taking 32 p- different people down to Louisiana for redfish. Oh, nice. Three, awesome fishery. Yeah. Great food, great people. Um, three hour flight from Detroit. So um, fly into Louisiana and uh, New Orleans and then you take a run, run a couple suburbans and shoot down to uh, either Venice or, okay. or Hopedale. Um if, if you love catching really big fish in really shallow water and a lot of them, that is probably right, one yeah. of the no coolest way. places. I mean, it's a very unique ecosystem. You're, you're literally at the, the mouth of the Mississippi river. Mm-hmm. Right. And just, you got, you can catch a, a giant, you know, 30 pound redfish, and then you can run two miles out and go out to an oil rig and drop a jig and catch a cobia. Right. You know, it's like, and then you go over there and there's like a school of tarpon. It's right. like, huh? <laughs> this is so weird. And then there's guys flipping in the grass for largemouth. Jeez. They're all in the same spot. So, I mean, like, where can you do that on earth? Right. Um, Louisiana. Right. No, that's, <laughs> that's on my yeah, bucket yeah. list. Yeah. Well, I'd like to go there. You gotta go, man. Yeah. Cause like, you know, I've been going down there now since 2017 and every year the guides are just like, it's not as good as it used to be, and the habitat is changing, and all the, really? the rosa cane that's out there in the mouth there is, you know, they're losing. You look it up online; they're losing, right, like yeah, you know, thousands of yards of this stuff every year. So it's like an ever changing environment. That we've, and if you really look at it and look at old maps of that area, dude, we've, al- we've altered everything. Right. You yeah, know, we've, ma- we've changed it, and it's right. ruining it. So. Um, if you're thinking about going to Louisiana, you probably should do it sooner, sooner, than, <laughs> sooner, yeah, sooner yeah. than later. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you got any spots left, Devin? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those ones that just they, they just fill up. Oh, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Well, 32 people. That's not like it's a. You're trying to. Yeah, it's three one trips. week thing. Yeah. Yeah, three I mean, trips. So I got a group from a, a local company, GM and Sons. Um, shout out to Carl. Uh, he put together a, a trip for his employees. That's oh, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, so that was kind of a bonus this year. I usually do two trips down there, but I'll be down there with the Jim and Sons crew in, in March and then go back down in August uh, pre-spawn and then go back uh, in November post-spawn. Okay. So it's pretty that's, awesome. That's awesome. Do. Yeah, yeah. I feel sorry for you. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right, right. yeah I feel sorry for my wife. Yeah. Um, but hey, it's work. Someone's got to do right. it. Right, yeah, right. right. Got to have a host or it doesn't work. Right. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. So. And then this year, uh, Fly Fishing Film Tour. Yep. You guys are bringing it back, right? Yep, yep. So, yeah, it's been uh, – we actually squeaked that one in uh, in 2020 right before the shutdown. So, uh, Fly Fishing Film Tour is a – think uh, – if, if you got any skiers out there, think about, like, the Warren Miller uh, ski, you know, film tour that they, they run. They've been running it for 30-plus years. It's pretty much that same style format. So, uh, Fly Fishing Film Tour, it's, let's say, 8 to 10 short films – um, it'll be at the Michigan theater in, in Ann Arbor on March 5th. Uh, we usually do it on a Friday night this year. It happens to be on a Saturday. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's like 18 bucks. But then show. you can buy tickets at the shop. You can buy right? tickets at the shop. Um, you can buy tickets at the door. You can buy tickets off the F3T website. It's just flyfishingfilmtour.com. Um, cool community event. You know, you get to see a it's bunch very, of people. Yeah. That, you know, you definitely like as a, a business owner, you see like the different groups of people that come on, come in throughout the year. So like, there's people that we saw like right before Christmas that we won't see again until the film tour because they just not end of time flies or right. whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's cool to get everyone back together. Um, you know, in its heyday, we were pulling 800, 900 people. Um, I doubt it'll be like that this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's we still have the big uh, the the big venue there at Michigan Theater. They have like three three. Um, you know, like viewing screens. Mm-hmm. Right. We got the big dog. So, nice. um, yeah, they'll have, uh, you know, snacks and popcorn. And uh, usually they got a nice selection of micro brews and whatnot. There you go. And, uh, that kind of falls on the Saturday of our 
anniversary uh, season kickoff week. Okay. Nice. So since the shop opened, we've always run like kind of, you know, tip of the hat to the anniversary. And it just happens to be a great time uh, in the Midwest to kind of kick off. Well, the, yeah. Kick off right. the new year right. the new season. So um, yeah, that'll be uh, March 1st through 6th. There'll be stuff going on at the shop. We'll have, you know, limited edition stuff, different swag. Um, I don't know if we'll do anything after hours. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's just kind of been saturated, you know, everyone's know. doing something, right? So it's mm-hmm. like, give everyone a break from the zoom. Uh, and a lot of people work from home <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we'll just have stuff going on uh, still supply chain issues. There's, there's not going to be like big sales or anything. Right. Um, you know, we'll throw you a free fly line if you buy a rod and a reel type deal, but I mean, just getting stuff. I mean, it's, it's amazing. You, we, our special order docs of like how many people are waiting to get a specific rod, mm-hmm. you know, it just, it's a never ending. Yeah, headache. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm um, sure. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's a, come on by. We'll definitely have, uh, some, some, uh, drinks. So we'll definitely have the Traegers fired up while the Yeti's full of, full of beverages and whatnot. So come on by, see what's up. If you're interested, there'll be Heck yeah. probably some promos on guide trips and promos on lessons. Okay. That's what we usually do that to kind of make it a little easier to right. get, uh, get yeah. rolling. Well, for those of you that listen who have not been to the film tour, it is a lot of fun. It and is. We used to go, when I lived up north, we Wealthy Theater, Grand Rapids, and we mm-hmm. used to go with that. I mean, that was, well, we always enjoyed it. And, I mean, I know my brother and I, we're going to be coming this year. I mean, we're excited for it. It's just yep. a good time. I tried to watch it last year online. Yeah. And it definitely, not it is same. not <laughs> the same. Yeah. I mean, it was, yeah. it was a... It was a struggle. Yeah. And I've, I've been to like a bunch of them, you know, like, and you've got, you know, some of them where it's just, people are just sitting there like you're watching a movie at the local uh, theater. And then you got some times where it gets rowdy. Oh yeah. It gets <laughs> real rowdy. Yeah. And I would say that like our show is probably fits somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I've been to them like in Denver, like during fly fishing industry shows. I've yep. been to them in Montana during that kind of stuff, and it gets pretty wild. Oh, I have a bunch of guides together yeah, and right. give them free beer. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. But uh, the beer won't be free in Ann Arbor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it won't be that crazy. I mean, it's definitely, you could bring bring the kids out. Okay. So, for sure. Well, it's a great time, and for all those that haven't seen it, I mean, it is a lot of fun. Heck, yeah. Yeah. Yep. They even do one for hunting, too. They do. Full draw. Okay. okay. I found it a couple of years ago. I don't know what I was. Found out on a rabbit hole on the internet. Yep. Found it, and it was, I mean, it was cool. I mean, I think they used to do it in Kalamazoo, too. Okay. That and makes sense. But, um, I mean, for all those little shorts that people spend all those time, those amazing shots that they get, I mean, it is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of fun to you get warm weather, hopefully warm weather during that time, and then you're, everyone's just Possible. itching, yeah, itching to no get doubt. out, and that just kind of fuels the fire even more to yep. get you out there. Yeah. So that, that's that week. And then the following week kind of got a double stack this year. That following week is the Midwest fly fishing expo, which is still going on, which is still right, going yep. on, which is one of those ones that was the casualty of the, you know, the initial shutdowns. Like right. literally we were packed up, ready <laughs> to roll trailers, ready. Let's no go. Friggin way. And they canceled it on Thursday before we were supposed to set up. Oh my so, gosh. Which we've ended up pivoting and pulling off an epic event. We called it the, just the SO Expo. Yep. And we just were like, hey, you know, use social media. Hey, if you guys were planning on going to the show, we still have all the stuff that we bought. <laughs> for right. The yeah. Show. yeah. Right. <laughs> Party's here. So, you know, I, you know, looking back on it, probably wasn't the coolest thing to do, but I went and bought a ton of Corona. <laughs> 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 and we just had a, we had a Corona fest. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then, you know, what's become of it since then? It was, you know, we were all like, man, this is only be a couple weeks. Right. Yeah. 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 Two weeks. years later. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So my goodness. So, yeah. So that show will be the first time it's been on in two plus years. So, uh, that's out in Warren at the uh, Macomb Community College. It is, I want to say, the largest fly fishing only show east of the Mississippi. No put joke. On by the Michigan Fly Fishing Club, and we'll be there in full display with six booths and. Right. Yeah, you guys don't yeah. come with just a table. No, I mean, you guys it. bring it all. Yeah. We, <laughs> our goal is to own the show, um, and that's kind of how we pack and plan for mm-hmm. it. So we'll be there with a full fly shop, ready to rock. Well, I've nice. seen. I mean, as years gone on, I feel like shows have kind of went to just like single booths almost. Right. When I used to go to a show when I was a kid, I mean, I was going there to buy something. Right. I mean, not just go look around mm-hmm. and look at all the cool places that I could dream about going, but I wanted to go spend some money. Right. And I think that's what 
great thing about you guys is definitely you bring the product so people have that opportunity. Yep. I mean, yeah. we talked about it too, about you guys are starting your online store, which is going to be fantastic because there are those people that they don't want to go anywhere. They rather just click and whatever. But yep. personally, I, I am not an online shopper. I hate <laughs> buying anything online. I like yep. to go touch it. I yep. want to feel it. I mean, you could be thinking you want this, and then you talk to somebody at your shop, and they go, oh, no, you want to use this for that application versus vice versa yeah. kind of thing. Now, we see it a lot. You know, like I, I don't spend nearly as much time on the floor, so to speak, at the shop. But, I mean, so, there's there, trust me, there's a lot of good – online retailers out there in the fly end of things, but then there's also ones that are just looking to push product. And sometimes the stuff that people bring in, it's like, I got this for Christmas. You know, I didn't know you were here, but can you help me set it up? And you're like, this is all going to go together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah. setup. I, you know, my grandma bought me it. It's like, who sold you this? Right. <laughs> you know, the reel's too big. The, you know, the line's not right, you know, whatever, whatever. So, you know, fly fishing is one of those things that you really do need to have like your local pro shop to like, Help, mm-hmm. you, help you get set up because every fishery is different. Um, and there's not, you know, one way to skin a cat, so to speak. Like you can, you, if you're going to get into it, find someone or a group of people that you really trust and um, you're going to kind of run with their program. Right. If not, you're gonna get, your brain's going to explode. Right. You know, there's a lot <laughs> of information out there. And that's why there's Schultz Outfitters. Right. Yep. It is why. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. <laughs> Surviving with no online store. Yeah. <laughs> that means it could be done. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I'm the same way. I mean, I, I played golf collegially, and I'm just a field player, right? And, I mean, I get asked it all the time, like, should I buy that club? Should I buy this drug? I'm like, no, go get fitted. I say it all the time. Yeah. Like, it costs you a little bit extra money, but go figure out what works for you. Yep. What's mm-hmm. built for you, right? And the same thing, like, it sounds like, you know, for certain rivers or whatever you're going after. Like, it's not just one all, play all right. kind of scenario. Um, and sure, it just takes a little extra time, but you're going to have more fun doing it because right. it's correct. Yep. Like, you our know? goal is when you walk out, you have zero excuse except for your skill level. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, but we can yeah. work on that, too. Right. Yeah. yeah, we can do work on that, too. But, yeah, I mean, you should have a properly properly set up everything from the rod to the reel to the line to your waders fitting right you know like all these different things that like you can do it really wrong really quick and it gets expensive if you oh yeah buying again you know yeah <laughs> right right and then resell it online that's right, right yeah. <laughs> yeah. no doubt heck yeah and then your guide trips mm-hmm. so when do they start yeah so uh you know we'll go year round but like t- to be realistic um as soon as that Midwest fly fishing show is okay. done. That's yeah. Just... So uh, that's kind of, you know, the guides know that once that's over with their obligations to the shop are over and now it's just get on the oars and start hammering and, and, and guiding and fishing every day, clearing floats. There's a lot that goes into it. Mm-hmm. We're not on rivers that are like, you know, maintained by the federal forest service. We were in, we're out there doing it all ourselves. Right. So there's a lot of work to be done in March, but uh, we will start doing trips in March. And then it gets absolutely nutty come come April. Um, and like I touched on earlier, there's different programs throughout the year. I would say if you're a first time, you want to, you've never been out with us before, you, you're not, you know, that proficient in fly fishing. You're gonna want to look to May, okay, when to start poking around, being like, I want to go on a trip. Um, you know, amongst the guides, we we call it the sleigh days of May. Um, that's kind of when the water temperatures are in you know, optimal water temps okay. to make the smallmouth bass just go nutty and <laughs> want to eat, um, at, uh, at a rapid rate. So, um, usually by May, the rivers have, um, stabilized, you know, mm-hmm. in the spring you got these snow melt and then followed right. by rain, rain events right. and whatnot. So you get up and down and that's, you know, that's one reason we guide six different rivers is because you, you need to have those options, right? Because, you know, the rivers to the North could be totally blown out and the rivers to the South are fine mm-hmm. or vice versa. So you got to be able to be able to move and whatnot. But, um, yeah, if you're, if you're first timer, you, you want to look May, June, July, those are kind of the peak three months for first time okay. customers. Um, the vast, like pretty much the whole front end of our schedule would be referred to as pre-spawn. So it's before the bass spawn. Um, we get people coming from all over the country to fish those dates because they know that's the really amazing time of year to catch a trophy fish. Okay. Um, 
just to touch on that, a trophy fish out of the rivers around here when it comes to a smallmouth would be like 19 inches or up. Um, that fish there is going to be definitely 10 years old, potentially 15 upwards of 20 years old. No Isn't that crazy? Nice. Um, so smallmouth live a long time, um, especially when they're not messed with. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the rivers around here, don't get me around, people fish them. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I've been guiding since 03, and I think six times ever, you know, six times since 2003 have I been on a river and seen another drift boat or raft that's fly fishing. Like, that huh. just right. doesn't happen. happen. Yeah, I mean, right. it's, we're not pulling into, like, you know, parks that have boat ramps and like, come here and launch your boat. You yeah. Know, a lot right. of times it's like, you know, throwing over the guardrail or dragging down a hill or mm-hmm. using a farmer that you met, you know, at the local donut shop that you just happen to exchange, you know, I own this. Like, Oh, can we use this? Sure. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> clean up the garbage, you know? So, um, you know, I, I, I often tell people if you are a serious angler and you're looking for some, something cool to do, like we are the way I look at it, where we're at right now with the, with the guide service, with the, the fisheries where they're at, like this is the good old days. We may be looking at this 20 years from now and going, man, like there's five other guide services. Right. Here. Yeah. There's right. You know, a lot of people that fish in these rivers right now, you know, since 2003, it's pretty much my crew and that's it. That's dope. You mm-hmm. know? So it's really, really nice. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, a, I mean, you can say it. It's not like you pull into Gleason's or. Right. Green Cottage, and there's 60 boats now loading. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> I was out a couple of weeks ago in Sedona with uh, with Allie and my wife, and we uh, went, like, just sightseeing, you know, and pull into these federal access points, and there's just cars, like, parked on the street. I'm like, man, it looks like, uh, looks like PM on Sam. Yeah. <laughs> <Sam. laughs> <laughs> just bo- it's, it's crazy. But, yeah, we don't run into that around here. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's truly in, in the madness of the world and, you know, how hard you got to go to stay on top these days. Um, it truly is a, an opportunity to unplug um, fishing oh, right heck here. Yeah. Right. You know? yeah. So, um, you know, like the, the longest drive that you'd have to come, like, to meet your guide would be, like, an hour from where we sit, you know, 45 Chism. minutes. And then you also have the Huron, which is right down the street. So right. It's, you know, right. five minutes from here. So, um, yeah, it works for people's schedule. It's uh, it's productive. You, you know, I, I can't tell you the last time I went out and didn't catch a fish. You know, I mean, it's like. 2010 right yeah, <laughs> right only catch them every time Heck yeah so, so yeah you, you do something a lot you eventually get good at it. right that's what they tell me yeah <laughs> no, no, i think the dnr do a really good job of just keeping everything stocked around here too yeah it's all yeah. natural man right 100 percent natural reproduction right yeah there's zero help for smallmouth bass i mean they're native they're wild they're supposed to be here um you know if you get three out of ten years where they successfully spawn that's like considered acceptable huh. and they will do just fine. Wow. Um, you know, we have some rivers that have low population density and then you have other rivers that like you could, you know, if you're decent, you go out and catch 50, you know, mm-hmm. no Jeez. problem. hundred percent catch and release. Right. So there's, there's zero uh, harvesting of any of these fish. We let them go. And sometimes we catch the same one again. Right. Yeah. Heck yeah. One of cool. the joys of it. No doubt. Right. I mean, as long as you handle with care, which I know I'm you guys do. Yep. But I mean, there is that misconception that people say that I mean, you release them and then they die, but not all. I mean, no. most of the no. time they don't. I mean, unless they're handled improperly. Yeah. I mean, you catch the same fish over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've really. we've done probably the last five years. We've uh, tagged some of the larger fish. Like, yeah. Okay. Like a twenty inch fish, um, pretty much is is maxed out. I mean, fish never stop growing. Even if you're in Michigan on a day like today, there's there's they don't stop growing. They they grow until they max out and then they stop growing. But, right. um, you know, like a fish of that, that size, we talked about how old they are. Um, you know, but a smallmouth bass is not a trout, you know, they are hardy. Um, the, the water temps that they can tolerate, you know, obviously it's freezing out. So it's 32, 33 degree water. If you were to drop a thermometer in the rivers today. Right. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you could be up into the high eighties and those fish are still, still, just still, fine. still going. All right. Yeah. Just right. Fine. So pretty cool fish, native Heck wild, yeah. you know, we're in there. I mean, this Bites is hard. Yeah. They I mean, fall. We were just oh, talking yeah. about that. How, I mean, I grew up, my dad was huge in walleye fishing. That's mm-hmm. all we ever did. Yummy. But I was yeah. Yeah, very <laughs> yummy. Heck yeah. But I was just more into, I was the outlier. All I want to do is bass fish. Yeah. I want to catch, release, catch, like just keep moving. 
I mean, trolling and down ringing, I mean, that's just boring. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, we I, were just talking about it. Yeah. Like, I want, I want some action yeah. all the time. Let's no go. No yeah. And that's how I still am. I think, like, when it comes to guiding, I mean, some of the people think I'm nuts. They, I mean, like, I just, I'm into it the whole time. Like, I'm a big, I'm a big, st- I stand. I, like, I stand and row the majority of the day. And, I mean, I'm just looking. I want to see the eat. You know, mm-hmm. I want to yeah. see it. You know, I've had so many customers, like, you know, they fish like, dude, like I've never seen anything like this in my life. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, you want it more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's well, kind yeah. of the guide you want. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. So, Not the one so, that yeah. just said, Sarah, oh, yeah, cast over there. Yeah. <laughs> Tip, oh, <high. laughs> what story do I tell now? Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I love it, man. I, I, uh, I'm 41, just turned 41 a couple weeks ago and it's just I, a number. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I, I'm, I'm to the point where I definitely don't need it, uh, but I need it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I need, I like, I could not spend my days in the store watching Michigan come alive in the spring. Like I need <laughs> right. to be, I need to be on them. I need to be on the fish. I need to be on the water. Um, you know, I'm always throughout this time of year, January, February, like that's just like, that's what gets me through it. You know, I'm not like, you know, right not to that point, but like, <laughs> yeah. it's definitely the light at the end of the tunnel where it's like, it's coming. I'm going to be like get, physically getting back into shape, feeling strong, being on the water, probably not sleeping very much, but right. I mean, like, I just, I don't know when, when that stops, I won't guide anymore, but right. you know, until that day, I'm just going to keep grinding Why not? Right. be like jack who's been on the show I mean, yeah we just had jack, jack on a yeah. couple uh, was it a m- month ago month unbelievable. yeah, yeah. he's an awesome dude unbelievable yeah how old is he 80 80 yeah 82 wasn't 82 he is what he said he doesn't even look 80 dude i'd take him in a bar fight i'd be like oh yeah, yeah. i'd take that guy. let's go let's go oh, jack yeah. let's take care of this. yeah yeah he's he don't mess around heck yeah. no and he's still t- he's still stroking the oars in that heavy old boat oh yeah the lava yeah. row Oh, dude. oh, yeah. Dude, I can't believe he pushes that thing. <laughs> I would be like, nah, I'm good. Well, at least he, he upgraded to the uh, electric acre. Okay. A few years, which, yeah. I mean, yeah, it was nice. But he's he's <laughs> rowing, like, the, Osab, the lower Osab. He's oh, rowing yeah? the PM. Like, these aren't rivers where you just throw the oars and float down and crack a beer. Like, you got to be on it. Right. <laughs> you know? He's, and most days when you fish with them, he... He rows most of the time. Yeah. He, he doesn't yeah. give it up. Dude. I mean, even when you're fighting for, because you want to warm up and you say, let me row. No, no, you keep fishing. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't want to. I want He's to row. a national treasure. <laughs> yeah. Jack Ford, freaking legend. Right. Yep. And you guys have him at. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Jack's been down. Uh, he came down for the book signing. Yep. Um, we, we had to uh, push off his class. It was supposed to be on Sunday. We had uh, a bunch of guys sick. Oh, okay. No COVID, thank God. But um, yeah, just we, we had to postpone that because we didn't have the manpower. But uh, yeah, Jack's awesome. He came in, did the book signing, sold a pile of books. Yep. And, um, yeah, I think he did, he did a really good job on the book. And uh, Jack, like I said, national treasure, man. He's he's amazing human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hope I look that good when I'm that age. Right? <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, that was the first time I ever met him. And and yeah. I remember you even saying something like, no, he's in the 80s. And I'm like, all right, I'm mm-hmm. thinking I'm going to see this like old guy. You know. I'm like, you're not 80. Yeah. No you look way. like you're 60, if yeah. that. Yeah. Like, just fit, yeah. tough, ready to roll, uh, and let's just talk some fishing. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jack's a man. Yeah. Love, love him. Yeah. But uh, who else do you guys have coming uh, for your fly? Yeah, so uh, Kevin Feenstra, another Michigan legend. He's uh, a guide on, on the Muskegon River. Uh, definitely is credited for, you know, I guess, uh, stoking the swung fly fire. Yeah. So uh, Kevin... Know, another another just amazing legend of Michigan angling. Um, James Hughes, who's our, our head guide, um, he's on February 23rd. Uh, James guides 200 plus days a year. He's an absolute animal. Jeez. He's captain of the uh, Eastern Michigan uh, cross country team back in the day. That's how I found him right when we opened up. He kind of popped his head in. He's like, oh my God, a fly shop in Nipsey. Yep. I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to school here for three years. This is the dream. Yeah. <laughs> so I ended up hiring him. Um, uh, right away uh, i'm just like second hire at the shop so he's my he's my number one dude but anyways he ties some really cool small flies i'll be tying a, a crayfish pattern i think and then ed mccoy okay who, you yep. know well ed mccoy uh is guide up on the manistee uh the pier marquette uh, a couple other rivers up there he's uh you know probably got 10 years on me but just absolute savage on the water super good angler um very fishy 
uh, big time fly tire. It'll be tying on uh, March 2nd. And then we got another month after that of people. I think Blaine Chocolate's the ninth. We got Senyo. We got uh, Chris Willen, guide up in Wisconsin. Bunch big of big names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, you know, you, it's, it's like anything. You, you treat these guys are friends of ours, but you treat right. them well. You, know, you mm-hmm. treat them well. You, you hook them up, compensate them, and they want to come back. Right. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, looking forward to that. Um, and then we'll we'll keep stuff rolling on on the Zoom. We'll, we have a. A series of uh, as we get itchy and you know as we move into March, uh, into late February, early March, we'll throw in some uh, just kind of open mic type stuff where okay. people, our customers can come on. We'll have a topic be smallmouth bass, uh, you know, preseason smart uh, pre spawn smallmouth bass, and we'll just get on there and people just fire us questions and we just you know answer the questions because mm-hmm. that's. Nothing replaces firsthand knowledge. You can go, right. on, yeah. You, yeah. You can go on there and read about pre-spawn fishing. You might be reading an article from Alabama, right? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> like, so. Right. What about my own backyard? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we do that kind of stuff. But yeah, man, just just always something. You know, mm-hmm. it's just those crazy ideas. I always just put them in my phone and present them to the to the rest of the guys. And if they they want to run with them, we run with them. If they don't, we keep thinking about new stuff. Awesome. Heck <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, a lot of good things coming. Always. Always. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you can never slow down if your foot's always on the gas. That is true. <laughs> it's a way to do it. Yep. Take trash. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey. Hopefully I'll live as long as Jack. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only halfway there. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I think exactly halfway there. Right. <laughs> 4182. I think that's what he said. Yep. We have to check, yeah. but. I believe yep. that is what it is. No, it's incredible to see the growth, obviously. I mean, uh, I've you know, kind of known you from a, from a backside long view, but it's, it's crazy just to see the growth you guys have been having. Uh, and it's, it's, I think it's a cool story just to keep going at what you love. Yep. Right. And you treat people right along the way. It, they're going to take care of you. And I think you're a true Testament to that yep. of just delivering a great customer service and obviously having a ton of fun doing what you're doing. Yep. So, uh, no, it's cool to see. Heck yeah, man. It's, uh, I think it's been a great time to have you on as well. Yeah. And just remember, if you see a Schultz Outfitter sticker, it's in Ypsilanti. It's not from, I mean, a different state. Up it's north. right in your backyard. That's right. <laughs> Who would have thought? You right. Know, Ipsy. Not but really. what crazy right. of a location. I think that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. I mean, right, right behind you is the river. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, that's just, that was a God yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's wild. There's literally. Perfect spot. If you look at the Huron, there's very few retail spots on the river. Like there's just doesn't exist right. yeah. even up through Ann Arbor, the, the town of you know Ann Arbor is up the hill. There's well, it's there. almost like yeah. the Forgotten River. I mean, has it ever been called that? I mean, Shh. you almost think about it. It's like yeah. it's so because it's so populated. You don't think fly fishing or any kind of fishing really. You got to go a little ways out up mm-hmm. to the north, to the west, whatever. But then it's like I mean, everything you see, you're doing right on the here, and like wait, wait, that's the Huron River. Yeah, like seriously. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And even if you're not into fly fishing and you, you know, you want to get involved and get out on the river, the, uh, we work closely with the Huron river watershed council. Um, just absolute benchmark organization when it comes to, you know, being river keepers and friends of, of local waterways, they're just next level. Um, their, their headquarters is out of Ann Arbor. Um, but they'll be at the, the film tour and, uh, we, we do, you know, the community it always comes back to that. So we, we yeah. do a couple fundraisers with them every year. One of them is called Hawking for the Huron where the, our, our guides all donate a day and we, we take out, uh, local business owners don't have to be a business owner, but a lot of local business owners, you know, you get a couple doctors, lawyers mm-hmm. and, and come out and spend a thousand bucks for the boat for the day. And all that money goes to, uh, to the watershed council. And, nice. You know, they've Very got a, nice. they've got a full-time staff and you know, it's not just some little, you know, rinky tiny office. Pride. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. This is a well-oiled machine that, uh, even if you're not into fishing, they have a lot of other ways to get involved with the river. Um, you know, in the, in the river corridor for that matter. It's, uh, it's and you guys cool do a river cleanup every year. Too. Yeah. 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 We try to do that. I mean, that's another thing Like the watershed council, they don't really have like set river cleanup days. I mean, they do, but they don't like, there's literally, if you want to get involved with them, there's river cleanups every weekend. There's really, you know, they, they have stuff going on all the time. Mm-hmm. So like huh. I said, they are the benchmark and if any other, you know, there's the friends of the Shiawassee, there's, you know, the Kalamazoo river Alliance and all these other, but like if they, they need help. They're they call them HRW. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, they're the bomb. Yeah, they're really good people. Where they go if you don't have any plans this weekend? Yeah. There you go. Hit them up. Go grab a garbage bag, clean up the river. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> right. 
your fish will appreciate it. <laughs> Heck yeah. But no, we thank you so much for coming on. I mean, it was a blast and learning the story. And I mean, obviously you guys continue to grow I mean, more than mo- all I see. <laughs> I mean, really. It's a tough game, but yeah. you know, if you commit to it, you know, you can do it. Yeah. Well, well when you say your, your stats are 1%, I mean, yeah. I mean, small. geez, Louise. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, it's crazy. But yeah, it's a definitely you know. And, and having said that, you know, it's it's it's. I would say one thing that's really changed over the years with the sport is the lower end gear, the less expensive stuff has become really solid options. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it's definitely you know, there's definitely stereotypes of fly fishing that you you know have definitely I think changed. You know since I've been in the game. Right. Yeah. But it's no longer this, you know, elitist, you know, type deal. Like, you know, like most people think fly fishing trout, fly fishing expensive, fly fishing hard, fly fishing, you know, old white haired old <laughs> right. dude with a you know tweed vest on. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's there's it's it's changed a lot and yeah. it's never been easier. Like the tapers of the lines, working with someone that knows what they're doing. Know, look, anybody can do this. Right. I mean, I got a, yeah. I got a five year old that can cast, and a ten year old that can cast. You know, I got some people that are like the m- most unathletic people ever. That you get them in the boat and they can cast and fish and right. do well. So, <laughs> you know, don't feel like you got to be some rock star to go out and do this or have a million dollars. You just, you, it's like any sport. You can, you can make it as expensive as you want. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. And get outdoors. Right, get outdoors. I mean, that's the best part about it. Yep. Just being on water. Ain't nothing, no better way to unwind from the busyness of our lives these days. Right. (laughs) Heck no, nothing better. But yeah, I appreciate it so much, Mike, for coming on. Great time. uh, And sharing, obviously, what's going on at Schultz Outfitters and Ipsy and just hearing your, obviously, amazing story, too. So it's it's awesome. We love having people on like yourself. Awesome. So we appreciate taking the time out of your crazy life, family, and business uh, to come join us. So we appreciate it very much. Awesome. Thanks, boys. Thank yeah. you. Well, I'm Paul Seguin with EXP Realty. I'm Devin Carr with Gold Star Mortgage. It's the Car and Seguin Show. See you. See you. The primary purpose of this podcast series is to inform, entertain, and educate. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast series do not constitute legal or professional advice, opinions, or endorsements of any kind. Gold Star Mortgage Financial Group. NMLS 3446, Equal Housing Lender.